Good morning, good morning, everyone. So glad to have you with us. We have been experiencing a lot of technical difficulties this morning, to say the least. And um, I apologize for the delay in getting started the service this morning, but we're going to open up like we typically do each and every single Sunday morning by um, opening up in prayer and asking God to speak to us today. So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to stand on your feet this morning with me, if you wouldn't mind. I want you to turn to somebody real quick right before we pray. And I want you to tell them, God is here. Would you look at them real quick and tell them, God is here? The Lord is good, isn't he? Let's go before the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. And Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we just ask and pray that you would speak to us and that you would reveal yourself to us this morning. Lord, we have so much to be grateful for, for simply knowing you. Lord, we have shelter. We have clothing. We have food. Most of us have jobs, Lord. We have provisions taken care of. Lord, you are so very good to us. And God, we're grateful for your goodness in and around our lives. Lord, we just pray and ask this morning that you would come in and that you would take your rightful place in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we pray and ask that you would prepare us, Lord, to be able to receive correction, to receive encouragement, to receive guidance this morning. We pray and ask that you would just rise up with inside of us continuing to make us into who you called and created us to be nothing more and nothing less father we welcome you we welcome you holy spirit and we just ask and pray in the mighty name of jesus that you would hear these songs today these songs that we're about to sing and know lord that it's from a heart of worship that we lift up these songs to you today lord we thank you we praise you. Make yourself known, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. He's good, isn't he? He's good. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean. Let's declare it. See how marvelous, how wonderful as my song shall ever be. My sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died Oh, I've 
Savior's blood And with the ransomed in glory His face I at last shall see it will be my joy through the ages to sing of His love for me. It will be my joy through the ages to sing of His love. Isn't it awesome to have a Savior who loves you? It's awesome to have a Savior who loves us today, isn't it? Lord, we just are so grateful for your love for us. We just pray and ask that you would rise up and that you would make yourself known to us. Lord, you are so good to us. So very good to us. Thank you, Lord. You know, we serve such a good God. He's so good to us that um, he's told us that he would fight for us. He is our banner. In Exodus, a group came and attacked Israel. It was their first attack after entering the desert. And in this moment, you see something unique take place. In this moment, Moses told Joshua, gather some of the men and go out and fight. And they started fighting, and this is the place where every time Moses and his arms and staff were up, they were winning. And every time his arms came down, they began losing. And then ultimately, there came a point where after they had won the victory... The name of God, Jehovah Nisi, was given to us. The Lord, our banner. The Lord who represents. And this morning, I just want to encourage you that whatever you're going through, whatever struggle you have, I want you to know that thousands of years later, he's still Jehovah Nisi. He's still the Lord who represents us. In whatever battle, whatever struggle we're going through, he still represents us today. He's still good to us. And so what I want to do this morning is I want us to sing a song. It's kind of a it's kind of a song that has been newer to us. We haven't sung it in a while. But I want us to take a moment and just let this sink in. Let this song minister to you as we worship the Lord this morning. Ask the one who if his peace is still enough to carry me, he'll say my God is still the same. Ask the one who's far, if the walls still crumble when I lift my praise, he'll say my God is still the same. 
when did he break his promise when did his kindness fail never has never will my god is still the same when did he lose his power when did his mercy change never has never will my god is still the same yeah oh, 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 oh. ask the one with less if his grace is still enough to meet my needs he'll say my god is still the same Ask the one who's lived If there's no power in his blood To save my soul The same my God is still the same When did he break his promise? When did his kindness fail? Never has, never will My God is still the same When did he lose his power? When did his mercy change? Never has, never will. My God is still the same. Not once did he ever stop moving. Not once has he ever let go. Not once did he ever stop proving that God is in control. Sing that again. Not once did he ever stop moving. Not once has he ever let go. Not once did he ever stop proving our God is in control. When? when did he break his promise? When did his promise fail? Never has, never will. My God is still the same. When did he lose his power? When did his mercy change? Never has, never will. My God is still the same. Not once, not once did he ever stop moving. Not once has he ever let go. Not once has he ever stopped proving our God is in control. Not once did he ever stop moving. Not once has he ever let go. Never has, never will. My God is still the same. Never has, never will, my God is still the same. Never has, never will, my God is still the same. When did he break his promise? When did his kindness fail? Never has, never will, my God is still the same. When did he lose his power? When did his mercy change? Never has, never will, my God is still the same. Are you grateful that your God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever? He is so good to us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you that you are still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Father, we just pray and ask that you would continue to speak to our lives. That we would become who you've called and created us to be. And Lord, in the midst of that, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to us. Because each of us carries some sort of stress. Each of us carries some sort of burden, even if it's for a loved one who's suffering. Lord, rise up inside of us. Lord, encourage us, Lord, through your word that you are still the same. Remind us that. And Lord, may we be a reminder to those around us that you are still the same, that you are good, that your power is real, and that we have a living hope in you, my Jesus, my Savior, and my Lord. Speak to us this morning, we pray. Continue to reveal yourself to us. And as we prepare to give to you today, Lord, we just pray and ask. Lord, you'd not only be honored through our voices, but Lord, you'd also be honored through our actions. Make yourself known to us as we continue to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.
You may be seated this morning as our ushers are coming for our tithes and our offerings. I'm so grateful to have each and every single one of you here with us as we are continuing each and every single week to reach out and minister to people in and around our community. This week, we've had the privilege of helping serve one of our own in, in addition to the many outside of the church. And many of you know who I'm talking about as we've reached out and we've had prayer. Many of you know Everton has um, has become homeless because of COVID and not being able to work and not having money and being able to pay his mortgage or his rent, I should say. He became homeless this, this week. And because of your all's generosity, not only have we met the needs of the community, but he has been able to temporarily get set up in a hotel and uh, to get a little bit of rest, to get some showers. <laughs> We've got him, his stuff moved into a storage unit, and uh, the church has been the church this week. <laughs> and uh, it's awesome to see how you all have responded and on behalf of Everton. I just want to say thank you so much for the many ways that you all have given and have offered to support him and help him, as well as many others within the community as well. It's been a, a true blessing to have each and every single one of you give. I again received a, a letter this week from someone who... Um, has been receiving help and again just absolutely moved by this church and its generosity and I say it every single week but I want you to know these are stories every single week and I don't mention names because I don't want to ever embarrass anyone or shame anyone who needs help so I don't mention names but I want you to know each time I share this with you there is a story behind this this vague and general <laughs> um, response during offering where I'm mentioning our help for people in the community. Every week, there's a very unique need that this church meets. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Our, our income doesn't simply pay bills around here, and it doesn't simply just provide resources, free resources. It makes a spiritual impact as we pray and minister on a spiritual level to each person we connect with. So thank you so very much for all the ways that you give. Let's pray. God, thank you. We thank you for your... Your blessings in our lives, we thank you for your generosity to us. And Lord, we are thankful that in a relationship, Lord, you allow us to participate in a relationship with you. Like a husband freely gives gifts to his, his wife, and, and then like a father gives gifts to his children. Like a mother uh, showers gifts on her children and, 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 and loves and, and respects and gives gifts to her husband. Lord, so you allow us to do the same. You allow us to participate with you. Lord, you don't need our money. You have everything. It's all yours to begin with. But Lord, you give us the opportunity to participate in this awesome relationship with you. And Father, for that, we are so grateful and thankful. We pray and ask, Lord, now, though, that you would rise up inside of us and that you continue to speak to us this morning, that you'd continue to reveal yourself to us as we practice right now our worship through not just singing, but through giving a portion of what you've given us. Lord, thank you for your many blessings. Use this for your glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may give. As you're giving this morning, I just want to make a couple of quick announcements for you. Um, number one, um, first and foremost, I want you to be aware that we have a sign-up sheet in the back for our um, monthly meals that we have here at the church. Last week was awesome. We had an incredible time together, incredible meal, and uh, we're going to be planning this next meal. So over the next couple of weeks, if you're going to be here at the last Sunday of the month, if you'll sign up in the back so that we can have an idea of who's going to be here, that just helps us prepare. We always prepare a little bit extra so that uh, in case somebody can come that didn't think they can come, they can still join us and eat. But if you'll sign up in the back, that'd be great. Um, at the conclusion of service today, we're going to pray for some specific needs. There's some needs that we have some folks who aren't here today, um, some who are, but we're, we're going to pray at the conclusion of service for some specific needs, and um, we're going to work through a few things as we close today. And today we have an incredible guest speaker with us today. Um, Dr. Gerald Doffey is going to be coming in just a moment. We're going to sing one more song, but in just a moment, he's going to be coming back up here, and um, he's going to be speaking. Dr. Doffey is a um, teacher, or has been a teacher at Lee University. He has, his last class was actually on Friday of this week. He's retired, and um, 
or I, I don't think anyone from Lee is really going to watch. I hope not, but he was my favorite teacher at Lee. <laughs> and if somebody else hears, uh, I'm sorry, but the, I have a lot of second place <laughs> teachers. <laughs> a lot of second place. I didn't really have a bad teacher, but um, he was by far um, the teacher I connected with most. He, um, he's a great man, and I'm going to explain a little bit more of our relationship here in just a few minutes. But before I do, I, I want to just let you know that today you're in for a special treat. He is a highly educated man who um, has a, a lot to offer the local church. He is responsible for many, many, many ministers coming out and, and doing great things in and around churches all across this U.S. And uh, he is an am amazing teacher. He's an amazing man full of character and integrity. And, and uh, I'm so excited for you all being able to hear from him today. But before we do that, we're going to stand one more time, get your exercise in today. Go ahead, standing and sitting, <laughs> and we're going to have you stand one more time. We're going to sing another song this morning. How many of you know that Jesus Christ is our cornerstone? He is so good to us, isn't he? The foundation of our lives. He is so good. And uh, as the cornerstone of our lives, we have a great opportunity to uh, simply allow him to be the foundation of our lives. This morning, I just want to encourage you that when Jesus is the foundation of our life, everything is built right. It's built sturdy. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Sing that again, my hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's blood. seems to hide his grace. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anger holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil.
very high in a stormy gale. My anchor holds within the rail. What I want you to do is I want you to take a moment. You just close your eyes. I want you to think about our future. Because one day he's going to return. We're going to sing this last verse here. As we prepare to sing this last verse. I want you to think about your future. Because he will return one day. The suffering we've experienced here on earth. It won't be what it has been. He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found. Dressed in his righteousness alone. Faultless stand before the throne. Are you grateful one day you're going to stand before the throne? Faultless, sinless, no longer having the temptations and trials. One day you're going to stand before the Lord as he called and created us to be in strength and in power. We're going to see the glory of the Lord. See those who have gone before us. We'll see his might and his power. We'll see Satan defeated. We'll see the victory once again because we made Christ our cornerstone. Are you grateful for that this morning? Let's declare this one more time who He is in our life. See Christ alone. before you right now and Lord we declare that today we know we know Lord that we're not in heaven yet but we know Lord we can find victory when we make you the cornerstone of our lives and we just pray and ask God that you would make yourself known to us today that you would reveal yourself to us that we may become who you've called and created us to be Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As you're seated this morning, would you turn to somebody beside you and would you just let them know that the Lord your God, He is in control. This morning, I have the privilege of introducing, uh, as I mentioned uh, by name just a moment ago, Dr. Uh, Gerald Dothby from Lee University. He was a, an amazing teacher to me, and uh, I love him so much, and I'm thankful to be here. So this morning, I'd like to take a moment and just simply introduce someone who is highly intellectual. I'd like to introduce you to a man who is full of wisdom. I'd like to introduce you to a man who has really impacted and influenced my life in, in amazing ways. I'd like to introduce you to a man of character and values. I'd like to introduce you to a man who has just absolutely changed the world. 
And unfortunately, he couldn't be here today, so I'm going to, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. For the good and for the bad, what you hear from this pulpit is the result of two people in this room, <laughs> my father and Dr. Gerald Dossie. And the bad stuff, if I may be honest with you, is not from either one of them. It's really from me. But um, Dr. Gerald Doffey has been a man that has influenced me in so many different ways. I've gone to him not just as an academic advisor, uh, advising, allowing him to advise me as which classes I should take, but I, I went to him multiple times for personal counsel on decisions and choices I needed to make. If there was a class available and I had a choice of teachers to make, I literally changed my schedule around so that I could be in class with Dr. Doffey. This was the kind of um, um, teacher he was to me and many other. And through the years, we've stayed connected. Through the years, we've um, uh, just developed a lot of different um, things. Um, okay, sure. And so he's doing, he's helping his father do something real quick. <coughs> I thought it, there was a, a message coming to me, but there is not. <laughs> but anyways, um, Dr. Gerald Doffey has truly been uh, a friend to me. He's been a mentor to many pastors as well. And uh, I've been wanting to have Dr. Doffey here for some time. And uh, I've just, you know, each and every single week, most weeks I'm in here preaching and with very few guest speakers in here. But uh, I wanted to make it a priority to get Dr. Doffey to come over to Oakdale. And today, he has um, blessed us with some resources as well, and some um, resources that I think that you'll enjoy, and I'll allow him to tell you a little bit about that m in a moment, but um, the, the, the resource is going to be of no cost to you all, okay? The resource is going to be of no cost to you all, but um, it, it's, it's, um, it's brought to you by, by uh, Dr. Doffy, who just loves pouring into people. He has been a friend of mine, and I'm so very excited to have him here today. I'd like you all to welcome Dr. Gerald Doffey. Thanks, man. Thank you. The writer of the Psalms said, The lines, the boundary lines, have fallen to me in pleasant places. My own mentor, the late Dr. Laud Vaught, used to quote that. And I didn't always understand what that meant. The boundary lines. I'm raised in farming country. I know about, you know, lines and all those things, but how would it apply to me? And then after finding out more, the boundary lines really involve where you work, where God has put you. And so for 49 years I have taught, and recently both Phyllis and I thought it was maybe time for me to retire. Uh, we had prayed about it, how would it happen, how it would work. I leave my office or have been leaving my office every night happy. Will I miss my students? Oh, yes. Will I miss my colleagues? Yes. be terrible if I didn't. But I know that what I've retired from, I'm retiring to and looking forward to what God will do. First of all, let me tell you, I'm not happy to be here. I tell my students, don't tell congregations you're happy to be here. If you aren't happy, they don't want to listen to you. And besides, that's so standard. Everybody says, I'm so happy to be here. So I'm not happy. I'm elated. I'm ecstatic. Uh, this has just been a great time. The only thing that would have made it better is Phyllis could have been with me. But she hasn't been feeling well and knows that uh, it would be best if she didn't travel. So she's been praying for me. I've talked to her already this morning and uh, <clears throat> looking forward to coming home and telling her all about you. Pastor Brian graduated in 2007, if I've got it right. 2002? Oh, man, you're a lot older than I thought. Oh, man. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> uh, no. He was with a group of students, though, that shared the good part of being believers. 
over the years, I have just been amazed at his ministry. I never really got to meet Emily. And this is the first time I've really gotten to meet her. And I'd always thought she's got to be some special lady to be able to be with Brian and all the things that they're doing. And you've got to be a special congregation. Because your outreach, your missional outreach, is mind-boggling. The many people that you impact every week, every year. You know, I've written about being missional, but you are the individuals who are demonstrating being missional. And I'm still amazed at all the things that God is doing with and for you. It's really been neat to meet the young ladies in the family. And uh, Kyla's going to be keeping my PowerPoint looking good today. <clears throat> I don't know if you ever wonder how a person chooses what they're going to speak on. And I suppose you hope that the Lord had some real insight into it. About 18 months ago, I felt that there was a sermon I wanted to preach and nobody gave me an opportunity. So I've been letting it cook on the back burner. And so when Pastor Brian invited me, I knew immediately where we would be going. I trust the Lord that when he gives me something, I don't have to use it right away. Sometimes you have to be patient and wait. And by the way, it's always good to meet some alumni from Lee that are here, especially one who took me for a class <laughs> back uh, a few years ago. Today, our passage of Scripture is found in the Gospel of Mark. It's a familiar story, and many of you probably could tell the story to me. It's found in verses 35 to 41. If you would turn in your Bibles or in your electronic devices, whichever you have with you, and follow with me, and we will be looking at various verses from that passage. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. And you can take your choice of titles for this sermon, because there are two that will apply. One is, does Jesus care about me? And the second one is, faith in the storms of life. Does Jesus care about me? Faith in the storms of life. I'm reading from the <clears throat> New King James, starting with verse 35. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Again, does Jesus care about me or faith in the storms of life? Three questions to start out with. Question number one, have you ever felt so lonely that it seemed no one cared no calls, no emails, no text messages, 
No cards. And sometimes after the death of a spouse, it's interesting how that many times, four weeks, five weeks later, nobody contacts you anymore. Or your change, if you move. When we moved from mine at North Dakota, all of a sudden, we didn't get calls from anybody up north anymore. They all went about business as usual. And by the way, they're still good friends when we go north. But have you ever felt so lonely that it seemed no one cared? How about a second question? Have you ever been in a crisis and no one ever came to offer support and comfort? No one really asking, is there something we can do for you and being specific? You know, a lot of times people say, well, if you need anything, just call us. And most of us never call, even if we need. That's why it's so important. If we're going to offer our help, offer something specific. And then the third question. Have you ever been so discouraged that hope just seemed to be a figment of your imagination? And then more than likely, in one of those three settings, you start to ask the why question, which we'll talk about a little later. But you know, in the book of Habakkuk, as you, or Habakkuk, depending on how you pronounce it, in chapter number one, basically Habakkuk says to the Lord, don't you see what's happening around it? How can you allow my eyes to experience this? And Judah was in deep, dark trouble. The idolatry, the lack of serving God was so intense. And Habakkuk says, God, where are you? So God says, well, I already got it under control. Uh, I'm sending the Babylonians to take care of it. And then he says, you're sending the Babylonians? Well, even in all our sin, we're better than them. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> That sometimes we, beget, we get so rational, <coughs> excuse me, that we forget we're asking God to do something, so why are we questioning what he chooses to do? In our text, as you recognize, Jesus and his disciples had spent the day on the shore of Galilee. So many people had gathered there that he commandeered a boat moved out into the water a little bit, and spent the day teaching them in parables. And you know how sounds travel over the water a lot easier than on land? No wonder Jesus used the boat on several occasions. After spending the day, Jesus told his disciples, let's get in the boat and we'll go over to the other side. The other side of the Sea of Galilee. And so I would like to suggest to you that, you know, whenever you follow Jesus, it provides opportunities for us to grow in our faith. But the question arising here is how do the storms of life become mountains of faith? How do the storms of life become mountains of faith? Now, if you're like me, you love to go to the beach. Don't get to go hardly at all. Favorite place is out on the Oregon coast where the waves come crashing in. And when the wind is heavy, even the waves come up so high, they splash over the, the highway. Uh, it's the power and all that thing. I, uh, of course, and it's not causing me any harm. You know, Jesus is susceptible to the fatigue. When you've taught or worked all day, and people have constantly wanted something from you. You get tired, and Jesus had that humanity, and so when he gets in the boat, he goes to sleep, and apparently he slept very soundly. It had been a long day. The Sea of Galilee <clears throat> is known for sudden and violent storms. The Sea of Galilee isn't very big. It's only about seven miles wide, maybe 12, 13 miles long. But it's in a little bowl, and the winds sweep over, 
and usually at night in the uh, at night, or excuse me during the day, rarely in the evening, and that's why the fishermen used to fish at night. But they get into the boat on this evening, and a violent storm came. You know, on the Sea of Galilee, it could be calm one moment and a violent raging storm the next. And if you look at verse 37 in our text, the storm was so great that the waves were breaking over the boat. And more than likely, there was water filling and they couldn't bail as fast as they wanted. Now remember, four of those men were experienced fishermen. They made their livelihood on this sea. And they, too, were very concerned. You know, in the natural world, we know about floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, tornadoes, and when you live in the north, snowstorms. I look at this picture up there on the left, and my hometown has just had 55 inches of snow in two and a half weeks. Uh, we lived there for a long time. I never, the old timers would have to look back to 1949 and 50 to find that. If any of you were followers of Carmen, who's now deceased, if you ever remember hearing his song, The Champion, he wrote that in Minot, North Dakota, when he was snowed in for two days, when we were having a youth group and the snow came. You know, there's various places you live. Moving down here, I was not used to all the lightning, the streak lightning. No, North Dakota, I like the round, one, 360 lightning that'll circle around. We don't have very many tornadoes. And maybe if you've been watching the weather, it noted that tornadoes are seemingly moving more eastward. Uh, I don't wish that on anybody, but I wished it was going some other way. But you know, there are personal storms that come to us, and I don't know if we look at them that way. But you know, sometimes there's dashed dreams. You reach a certain age, and what you hope for doesn't happen. Or that type of job or involvement that you really want, never, the door never opened up. Even though you deserved it, somehow it didn't happen. There's broken relationships. People that you thought you would be friends with forever. And you know, a lot of times our younger people have friends forever. I hope it is. But you know, it's amazing that certain stances can break them apart. And then relationships, friends, family, marriages. Had a young man in my class, always sat back pew on the left. It was a message class. And all of a sudden I noticed he became so sad and so sober. So one day I just thought I would ask him and I said, uh, I've noticed that you're kind of sad. Is there anything I can ha help you with? And he said, well, you know, my wife and I have been married one month, and she wants out of the marriage. And I'm thinking, one month? Man, you know, <laughs> I don't quite understand that, how you ever got married and been keep within a month. And then there are job losses, and it's amazing how many job losses, even pre-COVID, Company's up and they move, and you don't want to move, so you have your choice. Move 12, 1,500 miles away into a totally new community, and no guarantee you won't be pink-slipped when you get over there after a few months. And then there's health problems. And health problems hit people of all ages. Once in a while, I remind people when they come for premarital counseling, now have you checked your family health patterns? What has been the health issues of your parents and your grandparents? Are you prepared for that? Because more than likely, somewhere in the generation it will appear. And then, of course, death. So we have to ask ourselves the questions. When the most ferocious storms hit our lives, will we sink into despair? 
You know, and regardless of your experience, your age, or your past faith, when storm rages in our lives, sometimes the despair creeps in. Not because we are not good Christians, not because we aren't doing what we want, but it seems to be a human thought. When that rages against us, we begin to have despair, thinking, how are we ever going to handle this? Why is this happening to us? Once again, you know, four of the 12 disciples were experienced fishermen. And notice verse 38. <clears throat> they awake him and said, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? You know, it's not that gentle, uh, you know, could you wake up, master? We got a little situation we have to deal with. <laughs> it's not that at all. <laughs> You know, more than likely, at least Peter and Andrew, James and John had been on boats since they were kids. Their families were fishing families. And you'll notice that Jesus' presence in the boat did not keep the storm from happening. And on top of it all, he's in the boat and he's comfortably asleep. You know what the sleep of exhaustion is. You don't hear, you don't see and you aren't carrying anything but sleeping. And on top of it all, the boat is sinking. Water splashing in. You think, wasn't some of the water hitting Jesus too? And if we look at their approach, they wake him from sleeping. They suggest he doesn't seem to be concerned about their plight. I don't know how directly you talk to the Lord, you know, some of you probably are very skilled in being gut level honest with God. This isn't fair, Lord. This isn't right. And then you hope lightning doesn't strike you. But you know, when the stress and the storms are so disheartening, there is a point where questions start to arise. When you're surrounded by difficult situations, it's very easy to ask why. And by the way, asking why is not sin. God made us analytical people. We can reason, we can think, and why creeps in. The issue is, how long do we keep asking why? Personal experience, <clears throat> a particular ministry was not going to be available to me anymore. And for six months, I carried in my Bible the word why, tucked right in the middle. Nobody called me to preach. No article I tried to write would ever, was ever being published. And I just kept asking, why, why, Lord, this doesn't seem fair. And one day, a godly pastor heard from the Lord and preached to me all alone, I think, that Sunday. His sermon was stop asking why and start asking how. So I went home, took the why out of my Bible and said, how, Lord, are we going to? You know what? It was amazing. My attitude changed directly. Things changed. I asked why way too long. You know, it seems that the Lord had... Uh, Sometimes done everything possible, and we're just not sure if he's in control. And yet, in the back of our mind, we know he is. Well, the disciples have experienced the storm. They have experienced despair. And that's when Jesus comes to the rescue. Isn't it interesting that sometimes when we've done everything we can do, we need to stop and say, okay, Lord, it's in your hands. Verse 39, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. I find it interesting that he didn't keep laying there on the pillow. He stood up. 
He took the stance of authority. And he spoke just a few words. Peace. Be still. You know, the Lord brings the same peace to the storms in our lives. Sometimes the situation is still there, but we see it differently. We understand that maybe the timing is not right, or maybe there's something going to happen we hadn't planned on. But regardless, we're going to keep serving the Lord. You know, in the churches where I grew up, by the way, they were little churches. The buildings were smaller than this building. <laughs> in small communities, maybe 150 people, dirt roads. Um, my high school had 48 people in it. My graduating class was eight. We're still friends today. One just passed away, and it was a big sorrow for all of us. But, you know, I, I come from little places. But we used to sing that chorus, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. And then Don Moen also wrote another song. And maybe you're familiar with that one, God Will Make a Way. He wrote it after his sister and brother-in-law and their four children were in a major accident with an 18-wheeler. And the four children were thrown out of the van and one of the little boys died. And this is what he wrote, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. You know, the reaction of the disciples is rather interesting. Look at verse 41. After the storm is taken away. And you notice that their fear is turned to reverent awe. They said, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? They had seen marvelous miracles already. And now they are once again amazed at what God is going to do. You know, storms frequently bring us to a new understanding of the master that we serve. A new reality. And how important it is to be a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and accept him as the main person in your life. Coming towards the end, and you probably wondered how long I would speak. <clears throat> we've looked at the storm, we've looked at the despair, and we now look at the rescue. And I am sure that sometimes people think, well, have you ever been through what you're preaching? <laughs> you know, it's easy to get up front of people and preach what you can see on Scripture. And I did a little reflection as I was preparing. You know, by the time I was 17, my dad's health was nearly ended five times. And when I was a senior in high school, he had a major stroke that paralyzed his left side. And we were put in major financial problems. Had to have government help to survive. It was so tough on my mom. I was going to college. And the thought was, how in the world will I ever pay my way through college? There was no government loans. And a young man from our church had been in college and he said, Hey, Jerry, I'm going to Michigan. You want my job? My boss said that if you want it, you can have it. She didn't know me from Adam. So I went to meet this lady by the name of Ellen Huddleston. And I was hired and I worked four years there. And I worked my way through college. God provided a way. I did a lot of box 
pitching and, st and freight and all that. Scrub floors. And my boss used to tell me, when you get your degree, nobody can take that away from you, even though you're still scrubbing floors. I think about after Phyllis and I were just married, nine days after we were married, floodwaters came to mine it. We spent part of one night in our honeymoon apartment and we moved out, but we didn't lose anything. They closed the Bible college where we worked. Phyllis and I were both losing our jobs and we didn't know where would God take us? Would I continue teaching? Would I become a pastor? And for six months, we didn't know, but God brought peace. It was also the peace of a fine supporting congregation that was going to lose almost half of their members by the closing of that school. And then the Lord brought us down to Cleveland. All was said, never south of the Mason-Dixon, never east of the Mississippi. We love it in Cleveland. We like it down here. Two years after our daughter was married, she started to have problems with her legs. She was falling down. She needed a cane. They said she was going into a wheelchair, thought that she would have multiple sclerosis because we lived in one of the two states where more people have multiple sclerosis than anybody else. And the greater percentage is young women. That was kind of tough. She's our only child. There were times where Phyllis and I, without telling each other, said, Lord, we have lived a good life. You have cared for us. Lord, just take it from her and give it to us. I didn't know she prayed that, and she didn't know I had prayed that. We only shared that later on. Our daughter is not in a wheelchair. She just finished her master's degree 25 years after finishing her grad work or her undergrad, and she's starting her doctorate on the 9th of May. And I say, Lord, you have taken us through the storms. There's going to be a little yellow airplane that's going to pop up on the screen. Say, what does that have to do with your sermon? Well, this is the closest plane picture we could find. One Sunday afternoon, we went out on a, to a farm where a, a friend had built an experimental aircraft. Itsy bitsy, I mean, but two people would fit in. The wings were probably about four feet each. The whole aircraft was probably about 13. Said, let's go for a ride. Sure, I like to fly, have passport, need ticket. So we take off, but we never gain any altitude. We fly over the road, four feet above the road at 75 and 80 miles an hour. And, he, and my friend said, now let's go over into the pasture. And that's how we hunt fox. And you see this fence coming off and we go... Whoosh, whoosh, and we jumped fences. It was exhilarating. And then he took us up a little higher, and I'm thinking, yeah, I like this a little better. So we're flying along, and he said, um, we're going to do a loop now. I know what a loop is. You know, you go up and go upside down, and you come back around, and I'm thinking, okay. We came down out of that loop, and I thought I was going to go through the bottom of that plane. Remember, it was just a plane made with a few metal tubes, fabric covered, and nine coats of paint. <laughs> we came out of there and I thought, oh, I made it. I'd never pulled G-forces like that ever in my life. And then he said, watch this speed indicator. And when it hits zero, the front of the plane is going to dip right straight down. We're going to go straight down, and the wings are going to go flapping around like that. And it hit zero, and that's exactly what it did. Right above a farmstead, 
And then all of a sudden, the engine coughed to life and he pulled us out and again we pulled G-forces. By the way, I had a headache for 22 hours that excedrin and Tylenol and nothing would come. People have asked me, were you afraid? And the answer was no. It was exciting, but what was the reason I was not afraid is I knew the pilot. Harlan Olson was a precise man who did everything right or he wouldn't do it. And I knew that if that aircraft was safe for him and his wife and his daughter, it was safe for me. And I keep looking back at that experience. Didn't like the headache, but I'm so glad I had the experience. And I am reminded, who do I trust in? The master that I serve is precise. He knows what he's doing. Even when I'm pulling G-forces, even when it's a new experience, he knows what he's doing and he cares for me. I've been reminded of that verse or passage that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us, even in the midst of the storm. And he knows when and how he will rescue us. Amen. Pastor Brian. This morning, we're going to take some time in just a moment, and uh, we're going to close in a word of prayer. But I want us to, uh, before we do so, I thought it appropriate that we take a moment to, to worship the Lord our God. Because wherever you are this morning, wherever you are, whatever storms you may be facing or whatever storms that your friends or family may be facing, as Dr. Daffy has just clearly stated, he is with us. He is precise, and he knows exactly how to lead us through the storms. And this is so important for us. He is a way maker for us. He is a way maker for us. And I just want to close in, in this song to encourage you this morning. That no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter how difficult or challenging your storm or the storm of a loved one that you know is going through, Jesus is our way maker. He's never left us. He's never forsaken us. And it may feel like he's asleep on you, but he knows what's happening. He knows right where you are. And before we pray, I thought we should prepare our hearts. Let's prepare our hearts by song. Let's prepare our hearts in response, a spiritual response before we pray at the close of service this morning to, to really apply our faith the circumstances we're facing. So would you just close your eyes for a moment? Just close your eyes for a moment. Would you just ask God to speak to you? Lord God, we know that you are our way maker. We know, Lord, that you are our way maker. We know, Lord, where you are and what you're doing in and around our lives. Speak to us today. Speak to us and reveal yourself to us. You are here, moving in our I worship.
declare this about him. ourselves with these words. And even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop. Never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never 
never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise people, light in the darkness. That is who you are. Oh, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise people, light in the darkness. That is who you are. to us and as we prepare for prayer this morning here's what I'd like to do ask you to sing this one more time but let's make this just a little bit personal just take a moment just make this personal for a moment to your own life and we sing waymaker miracle worker he's a promise keeper light in the darkness who you are to me. <laughs> He's a way maker for me. He's a promise keeper for me. He's light in the darkness for my life. That is who he is for us. Just close your eyes one more time. Let's just declare this one more time to the Lord our God. Way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in my darkness. That is who you are. Way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in my darkness. That is who you are. 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 You are good. That is who you are. Lord, we surrender our lives to you and declare that you are our way. You're our living hope. You are our strength. And God, we know that as we turn to you, Lord, Lord, that we can find peace. We can find strength in the storm. Even though it's around us, even though it's dangerous, we can find hope. Father, make yourself known to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So here's what I'd like to do this morning as we close. We're going to open up. Um, our altars for a little bit of time of worship and prayer. We have some specific needs that I want to share with you about, and we're going to um, specifically pray for some specific needs. Um, a couple of people have approached me before service and have asked for specific prayer, so that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to have that specific time of prayer. And so um, let me share with you what they are real quick, and then for those of you who I didn't get to talk to beforehand, if there's any additional We'll um, give you the opportunity to share those, um, those needs as well, and we'll pray for you real quick. And so here's what I'd like to do is I'd like to just take a moment and just share those very quickly. First of all, um, we want to um, ask prayer for Ruby, her sister specifically. Her sister, um, I guess, is back in, uh, is it California, Ruby? 
I can't see you because of the pulpit. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, um, she's back in California, and she's been unable to reach her sister. She talked to her for a moment, but the phone went dead, and um, her sister is um, not at a place where she really knows where she's um, at and, and how to find help. So let's pray for her sister this morning, and uh, we'll um, specifically pray for her. We also want to pray for um, a family member of Cindy's. Um, Cindy uh, is not here today, but um, Cindy has a family member. Is it an uncle? A cousin, sorry. It's a cousin of hers who's having some real physical problems and, and needs a physical touch from God this morning. And uh, there was one more. That's right, Linda McGinnis's family. Um, they are having some, some real challenges as well in the situation that um, is, is going on in there. And, and she just asked for prayer for her family overall. We want to also continue to remember Sharon in our prayers. We're going to pray for her again this morning. And uh, is there any other prayer requests that we have? Any others? Oh. We're going to um, just have a closing prayer, and then I'll close this out one last time. Uh, sharing with you some resources that Dr. Davi has given us. But before we do that, we're going to close in a word of prayer. So I'm going to make my way over to where they are, and uh, we'll pray together. And I'm going to pray over there off to the side, and I know I'll be off camera and all of that. And so for those of you online, I'm sorry. Um, you can fast forward, and I'll close in a little bit. <laughs>
Dr. Doffy has um, brought 25 copies of this book. So we're asking that um, one per family would be um, taken. And then once every family has one, if you'd like a second copy to give to somebody else, that is fine too. This book was uh, written as Dr. Doffy was going through his own storm, as he, he was working through it. It's called In the Face of Evil, You Can Find Faith. And um, he was losing, this was when he was leaving the, the school, the, uh, Northwest College. And um, in the midst of this, in the midst of his pain, he, he wrote this. So I just want to take some time and encourage you. It's in that brown box over there, up on our welcome desk. Feel free to grab one on your way out. Feel free to come over and talk to uh, Dr. Doffy as you uh, head out as well. I know he'd love to connect with you before you all leave. But thank you all again for coming and for joining us today. And for those of you who are going to be tuning in much later <laughs> on YouTube, thank you for taking the time to go ahead and watch anyways. Uh, we love each and every single one of you. But I hope you guys have a great week. Thank you all for joining us. We love each and every single one of you. We'll see you guys uh, next Sunday. God bless.